So we are here tonight at the New Alm Forum, sponsored by the League of Women Voters New Alm. And I'm Heather Briegel, I'm a League of Women Voters member. And you are? Chris Dalton, a new resident and new Assistant City Manager, Economic Development Director uh, for the City of New Ulm. Um, so during the interview, I'll be asking you some questions relating to your job, as well as some just get to know you questions so the community can get to know you better as a newcomer to New Ulm. Okay. Um, so you have roughly eight weeks under your belt in your new job. How do you feel it's going so far? Uh, I feel it's going actually really well. I love the job and what I'm doing, and so it's been an easier transition than I thought it was going to be, you know, coming from California out here, and uh, everyone, all the staff has been very supportive, um, you know, giving me information that I need to actually succeed in my, in my job. All right. Have you had any eye-opening experiences you could share? Yes. Um, getting in touch with the state representatives has been a pleasant surprise. Um, in California, you know, you want to talk to a state representative, you know, about a program or something, and it's, I'll get back to you, you know, when I get a chance, and that's three, four weeks later. You know, here I called um, our deed representative and got a email and a phone call back within, you know, a couple hours, and that was, that was a nice surprise. And then they all came out uh, to visit to explain some of the programs that I needed to get information on. So that was, that was nice. Um, what was your first job? <laughs> My first job was picking lettuce uh, in the fields. Um, that was the job that made me realize I wanted to get a college education or more affirmed that I needed a college education because I did not want to do that job anymore. All right, so your answer to the next question might be the same job. What was the worst job you ever had? You know, I haven't had a bad job. Um, even working in the fields, it was hard manual labor, but it wasn't a bad job. You know, it wasn't the worst job I've ever had. It was just one of those experiences that was, yeah, I don't need to do this anymore. I've done it. Um, I say I get, that I've done it and done that manual labor component. Um, you know, I've, all the jobs I've had, I've had for multiple years because I've enjoyed working everywhere I've I've been so at the end of the day haven't really don't really have a worse job okay. uh, tell us about your family okay uh, my family I have a, a wife uh, who is a teacher she teaches sixth seventh and eighth grade history in California um, she just got her license uh, here in Minnesota so they emailed her and said you're licensed in Minnesota so she's pretty excited about that uh, and a 13 month old son uh, who is probably the easiest kid I've ever dealt with ever. Uh, and I'm sure every parent says that, but doesn't really fuss. You know, he's very easy, easy going, gets along with everyone. We can take him anywhere and he's pretty much good to go. Uh, and there, my wife is really excited to come back uh, out here permanently. And I think she's coming out the end of, end of June. So she's looking forward to that. Uh, so where were you living before moving to New Ulm? Uh, I was living in Mission Viejo, uh, which is about about a half hour, 45 minutes south of Anaheim, where Disneyland is, so South Orange County, um, and worked in Santa Ana, so that was kind of a nice hour and a half drive to work every day. Okay. Good times. So why did you choose to leave Southern California and relocate to a small town in Southern Minnesota? Uh, it was the job opportunity. Um, in Santa Ana, uh, the program I was running, uh, the governor had killed the program. Uh, and so they were, I was transitioning between a lot of different positions uh, and I ended up doing, uh, managing our community development block grant. And it's something I just really didn't want to do. So I guess that would be the worst job that I had. Uh, was managing that because it's managing federal dollars and a federal program. So tons of regulations that just make a program really hard to run. Um, and economic development is really my passion, what I wanted to, to focus on and what I really wanted my career to be. So one day I was searching on uh, NeoGov for economic development positions and I saw the new home position come up. Um, 
it took me about two weeks to actually submit my application uh, because I had to discuss with my lot, my wife, do I really want to move to Minnesota? Is this really what I want to do? You know, coming from a metropolitan area of a couple million people to a town of 13,000, you know, would be a big, a big shock to the system. Um, but it, you know, it hasn't been that. It's actually been really nice, and I've enjoyed being here. No traffic, and just kind of getting along with everyone that I've, you know, interacted with. So. Okay. So you put in your resume. You came to Nuam for your interview, yep. and took a look around. Um, specifically, was there anything particular in Nuam that you saw during that experience that made you want to relocate here? No, and that was the funny part because it was zero degrees on my first interview and it was freezing cold. Um, really what made the decision um, to move to New Ulm, you know, was the chamber welcome guide. Um, I saw that online and it kind of laid out pretty much everything, you know, get your license, get your registration, this is where you do it, you know, this is the utilities and kind of laid out everything about the city um, and different events um, around uh, around the town and you know what was around the city um, you know and that made it a really easy decision because I didn't have to hunt for that information it, it was there um, and yeah and it wasn't until my my second interview that uh, that's when I started seeing you know, the stuff in the town because it was a little more drivable um, at that point. You know, I was given a tour and was able to see things. Um, so it was really um, the second interview that kind of hammered it home that, yeah, this is where I'd like to live and this is where I want to raise my family. Okay. Uh, were you able to find adequate housing to meet your needs? How easy or difficult was your housing search? Uh, I was... I was very lucky. Um, I had a good real estate agent, and she was able to find me some rentals. But the um, HR department actually sent me the contact uh, for the rental unit that I'm currently in, um, and that was amazing. Because when they told me the the rent compared to what I was paying in California, I didn't even need to see the apartment. I was like, I will take it. That's where I want to be. Um, and my real estate agent, she worked really hard to find us a place, a, a home to purchase that was move-in ready. Um, you know, as soon as stuff would pop on the market, she would give me a phone call and was like, right after work, we have to go to this house and see it because it probably won't be on the market that long. Um, and so it made it really easy and she knew what we were looking for and um, we were able to find a house and we'll be closing uh, this Friday. Um, so you so intend to stay? Yes, good. I intend to stay. <laughs> That's good news. Uh, so as a newcomer, have you found New Ulm to be a welcoming community? Yeah, I haven't had a bad interaction with anyone. Uh, when my family, when my wife and child were here, we ended up stopping at the, the knitting store uh, downtown, and we probably spent an hour in there talking to the owners. And I mean, it was just a very welcoming and inviting um, situation. You know, I've been going to the different bars and restaurants on the weekends and it's been, I haven't had a bad experience yet. Sitting down talking to random people at, you know, at the bars has been, has been fine. Um, restaurants, going to the gym, you know, even at the grocery store, you know, it's, it's been nice. What do you see as Nuam's challenges? So probably the three biggest challenges that I see, and this is more probably from an economic development standpoint, would be um, housing, uh, you know, whether it's affordable housing or lack of housing, um, child care, which I will soon be facing, and um, an aging workforce, you know, and by that I mean, you know, the workforce is getting older and there's not a plethora of young individuals or you know people to fill those positions as you know they start retiring out so there'll be this period where there's kind of a shortfall of, of workers um, you know and that also ties into the housing where if we want younger people to come in we have to have places for them to stay you know and um, 
housing study that New Ulm just did. It's a 1% vacancy rate in, you know, in the apartment complexes. So that doesn't leave a lot of open space, which in hindsight, I was really fortunate to find a place to stay. So that are kind of the challenges that I see right now. So on the flip side of that, what do you see as New Alms advantages? So the advantages that I see is you have a historic downtown. Yes, it is fairly vacant recently, and there's a couple buildings that need a little love, but the historic downtown can be a centerpiece to attract people um, and tourists to come down there, you know, and with all the festivals and, and um, activities that you have in the city, um, once the pieces start falling into place as far as, um, you know, getting the housing and things like that, and what I see is social and, and the tattoo parlor coming in um, as kind of the start of a revitalization of downtown. Um, when you have those festivals, entrepreneurs will see like, oh, you're allowing this type of business. Oh, you're allowing this type of, you know, restaurant with a lounge in it to exist you know, they'll start to see that and it may click in their mind, like, now I want to open up my business downtown. So that's, you know, the historic downtown is, you know, an advantage that's out there. You're a, by, what, a bronze level bike city, you know, that's an advantage for, you know, livability. You have a state park, you know, within your city limits. The city is super safe. You know, my wife who doesn't feel safe everywhere, feel safe here when we were walking around, you know, at eight or nine o'clock at night. She's like, I'd let Jack Jackson walk to school when he's old enough, you know, so she feels comfortable. Um, you have a large uh, industry, um, industry base here, you know, which is also easy when you're trying to attract other industries. Like, well, we have these other industries, so, you know, you can work with them, you can cut down costs and things like that. That's um, always a plus and a, and a big advantage. Um, so, you know, those are some of the advantages, you know, that I see in the city. Okay. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, more the get to know your question. If you could win an Olympic medal for any sport, real or fake, what would it be? It would be basketball. I love basketball and winning a gold medal in basketball would be awesome. Um, remember watching the 92 Olympics with the first dream team. I mean, that was an utterly awesome experience watching them destroy world competition and uh, to be part of something like that, be part of a team, go through that process would be, would be a really good experience. Right. Uh, what is one thing about you that surprises people? That I'm Asian or part Asian? When they see the name or they hear the name and I show up at interviews, they all kind of stop and look at me like, that's weird. But uh, that was always kind of that, that process I get and, you know, meeting new, new people. When I tell, you know, they ask me what I am and I'm saying part Asian, they kind of just look at me like, oh, I would never have guessed that. <laughs> Um, what initiatives from your previous position would you like to bring to New Orleans? Um, I guess this would tie into to the housing. So, you know, a down payment assistance program um, would be something I would like to bring uh, to the city. Um, rehab program for single family housings would, you know, be another one. Um, if I can get a business startup grant off the ground, um, that would also be a really good incentive to bring, especially for um, more of the retail businesses, because that would kind of be what that would be geared towards, you know, your smaller entrepreneurial businesses that are opening up storefronts for the first time. Um, you know, we had really good success in, with our program. We had about an 82% success rate with that, where a business was open a year later um, because of the, the funds that were given to them. Um, so those are kind of the three that I would, I would like to bring. Um, you know, some other kind of incentives that might be, I would think about doing is maybe some type of childcare um, grant, you know, kind of along the same lines of the business startup grant, um, you know, but it's just being able to find the funding um, for those programs. Um, so 
and keeping my eyes open for you know the Southern Minnesota Investment Fund to see if when their grant cycle comes around, I missed it this year and I didn't want to rush a program, but next year apply for it and see if that's something that, that we can do in the city. Okay. Um, is there something about you that people misunderstand and if so, what would that be? Hmm. I don't think so. Uh, I'm a fairly open book. You can ask me any question and I'll answer it, you know, to the best of my ability. I'm, I may, oh, well, I guess a misunderstand is I love music. And when I'm out walking, whether it's in the grocery store, if it's out on a walk, I always have my headphones on. And it doesn't mean I'm antisocial and I don't want to talk to you. It's just I don't like being in silence, so having the music um, on is just my way to enjoy whatever it is I'm doing. So, you know, if you see me out in public and I have my headphones on and you want to just tap me on the shoulder, I'll be more than happy uh, to talk to you. My headphones on does not mean I don't want to talk to you in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, name something that's been on your mind a lot lately. Closing on my house. I have never owned a house, and so closing, having all the documents ready, final walkthrough, kind of that whole process uh, has been on my mind, and, and probably not having my family here has been a close second. Um, you know, this has probably been the longest I've ever been away uh, from them, and you know, yeah, we FaceTime, you know, with Jackson, but. He's one, so he kind of stares at me for a second and then runs away and does his own thing. So it's, she's sending me pictures of all these things they're doing together. And I was like, well, I'm not there to do that stuff. And when he moves here, I don't get to do that stuff because it's more, you know, Disneyland, SeaWorld, Legoland, kind of all the Southern California stuff that he'll get to do before they, before they come out here. And yes, there's stuff for us to do out here, so. The experiences will be different, but to me, it's like you're getting them used to going to Disneyland every week. So when that stops, there might be an issue. You're dealing with several of the major life stressors all at once. The yes. Job, moving, buying a house. Yeah, it's. <laughs> you just tackled them all. Yeah, and get them all out of the way at one point, and never have to deal with them again. That'll be easy street <laughs> after that, right? Yes. Um, okay, how do you interpret or approach your role? Um, as the economic development director slash assistant city manager, which we call EDD ACM because it's easier yes. to say. Well, Minnesota loves their acronyms, I we found do. out. There's acronyms for everything, and I'm, having to figure them out has always been that weird, like, I know what some of that is, and I have to figure out what the last letter is or what the last two letters are. Um, but as far as how I interpret it, I interpret it kind of coming from a customer service standpoint. Um, whether it's going out to a business, having a business call me, um, it's what can I do for them? You know, whether it's returning their phone call within 24 hours, whether it's setting appointments, keeping them, you know, following up with things that I say I'm going to follow up with, you know, in a timely manner so that they know that they can contact the city and get the information they need and the help they want, you know, and, and get that information out there to other business owners that may not feel that they can contact the city or they don't have that point of reference. So um, for me, it's really getting out in the community um, and talking to those business owners and, you know, like, hey, if you need anything, call me. You know, I may not have all the answers and I may not be able to say yes to everything, but I will do what I can to help you and point you in the right direction to get the help um, that you need. And then if you ever need anything, you know who I am, you can give me a call. And I think from what I've heard so far in the community, that's kind of what's been that missing component um, that's been there is kind of that customer service, that business to business customer service. And so I want to bring that to the city and, you know, facilitate that process. Um, so my next question, we've touched on a little bit. You mentioned that you're um, part Asian. Yes. Uh, what is your ethnicity, if you don't mind sharing? No, uh, don't mind at all. I am a quarter of everything I'm going to mention. Uh, I'm Chinese, Filipino, Puerto Rican, and Irish. 
uh, so a quarter of each, and that's a, a nice a mix. <laughs> it is, it is. My uh, my grandpa was in the Navy and stationed in Puerto Rico, so that's where the Irish and Puerto Rican come from. And my grandparents on my mom's side were Chinese and Filipino, and so I became a quarter of each. And it's 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 been good and bad. I mean, it, it's by my name, you know, everyone thinks I'm primarily white and then when they see me it's kind of oh you're not what are you you know you get that question and you know it works to my advantage sometimes and sometimes it doesn't but you know growing up I was never Asian enough to hang out you know with my Asian friends all the time you know I'm not Hispanic enough to hang out with my Hispanic friends I'm not white enough to hang out with my white friends and so it's like I had these groups different groups that didn't want to co-mingle and I wasn't cool enough to hang out, you know, be invited to everything. And so, um, you know, not so much an issue when I got into college, but high school, you know, a little more cliquish and, you know, I'd be invited to some things, but not everything. And, you know, it kind of made me who I am today where it's, I don't care. I can hang out with anyone, comfortable with anyone. You know, it's, there's nothing for me to, you know, say bad about anyone and nothing really offends me about anything, so. How many languages do you speak? Not necessarily fluently, but oh, I know you you've know. learned several. I've learned several, yes. Um, I can speak some Japanese, some Korean. Spanish would kind of be my most fluent language, um, but I'm not comfortable enough speaking language on a regular, you know, those languages on a regular basis because I don't like butchering language. Um, that's just my thing, but I can understand if someone's, you know, having a conversation in Spanish, I can understand most of it. Um, I just don't feel comfortable speaking it back. Um, and then, you know, with Korean uh, and Japanese, um, I can understand a good portion, uh, but speaking it is kind of hit and miss, um, but I can write in Japanese uh, and that's probably the extent of it. Okay. Um, how do you intend to work with surrounding communities to further promote and develop New Ulm? So that would be, you know, kind of that regional approach to economic development where, you know, what's good for one city in the region should effectively affect everyone and, you know, positively. Um, you know, and it's really going out to the other cities, you know, kind of figuring out, talking to their economic development um, department or, you know, whoever the head of their economic development is and find out what they're doing, you know, and kind of saying, you know what, you have this program, maybe if you do this, it may work a little bit better, you know, and vice versa, like, um, you know, best practices, you know, if everyone is doing the best practice, then you should have more success uh, in promoting, um, economic development, you know, the one thing that I would say I, I wouldn't um, like to do, is, you know, is, is poaching businesses from the surrounding communities because, you know, you're just taking a business from somewhere else and putting it in your city and it, it's just an equal change, you know, it doesn't do anything good. I would rather try to get new businesses or help businesses expand within our community, you know, because if they don't fit in New Ulm, I want to help them find a spot, you know, still within the area so, you know, that they may still live here, but their business is out somewhere else. So, you know, there's equal trade where, you know, housing is, is an issue everywhere. So you don't have to, oh, no, now I need to build housing or find housing for all these employees. You know, they can still have, you know, we can still be that regional hub that they can travel to work to. So, okay. uh, so where is your happy place? <laughs> I guess two happy places. Uh, one would be on the basketball court, um, and the second would be in New Zealand. Um, me and my wife, we, we visited New Zealand for about two weeks, and if I was gonna leave the US and move to another country, New Zealand would probably be it. Okay. Yeah. And what is your hidden talent? I guess that I can play basketball. You know, being five foot nothing, uh, <laughs> You know, most people would assume I don't play basketball, but I can play basketball. Um, what are your thoughts on New Ulm becoming a green step city? 
Um, you know, if it's something that the residents really want the city to do, it's something we can do. It's, it doesn't look like it's super difficult, but it could be costly as far as trying to put together, what is it, 10 initiatives, you know, uh, 10 green initiatives, you know, some that we're already currently doing, but you have to implement some new, uh, new initiatives. So there is a cost associated with that. Um, you know, and I don't know if it's something that has been budgeted or will be budgeted for, but, you know, if it's something that the residents really want us to be a green step city, it's something we can look into. I'm not opposed to it, but, you know, doing my nightly walks, I don't see anyone with their lights on 24 hours a day, you know, they're not over watering their lawns and things like that. So I think the city has already kind of gone in that green city direction without being called a green city. So it's, you know, do we really need to go that route or have the citizens kind of just take it into their own hands? And they're already conscious about that, you know, and, you know, we do have a couple programs um, through the PUC, you know, for, you know, was it uh, getting energy efficient light lighting and things like that. And maybe it's as simple as, okay, we don't need to be a green city, but here are are there programs that we currently have to help you, you know, achieve being a more uh, green citizen? Mm -hmm. okay. What is your favorite book? Hmm. I would have to say probably uh, it's a series of books. It's called uh, Tales of the Otori, and it's written by Leanne Hearn. Uh, I think there's five or six books. I read the first three um, and it was one of those books that I just couldn't put down. So I don't read a whole lot. Um, you know, I'd rather be out active doing things, but it was one of those books I picked up and powered through in a day and that's usually not what I do. Okay. So my next question, what are you currently reading? Oh, that would be Star Wars ABC pop-up book. Um, <laughs> Anything to do with Star Wars board books for, for Jackson, um, you know, try to redo them, you know, over the phone. Doesn't usually work out, but uh, he's, he's into Star Wars pop-up and board books right now, which makes me happy because I like Star Wars, so it works out. Uh, what are your thoughts on New Alms Complete Streets policy and what can the city do to further promote and improve walking and biking in town? Um, the complete streets policy to me is fine. Um, you know, you've got gone in the right direction. You know, you have the bike markings on the street. Um, you know, I walk every day and I don't have an issue walking around. Um, you know, I do see when you're coming up over the <laughs> hill on center street that pedestrians may be in harm's way at some point, but um, you know, that's just getting, um, you know, maybe the crosswalks painted a little bit darker because they do look a little faded. So, you know, cars can see that, but you know, the complete streets, that's, that's a big thing kind of going across the U S and, and especially in downtown areas where, you know, they don't want driving to be the only way to get downtown. And to me, New Ulm is very walkable compared to places I've been, um, you know, I can walk from my apartment to downtown in 20 minutes. And, you know, the lights are where I need to cross, but, you know, from, was it 10th to Center Street, there's not a single crosswalk, you know, across there. And, you know, maybe that's something that, you know, the city could look at in the future, maybe just putting in a crosswalk somewhere to make it a little bit safer so you don't have to walk or, you know, to, 10th or center, you know, there's some something in between um, to make it a little safer, but, you know, being in a... they are looking at doing something at 4th South and Broadway. Okay, you know, because to me, I'm an adult, I can take my life into my own hands and I can see when it's safer to cross than others, but kids, maybe not so much. So, you know, it, it'll help them get across the street, so. How do you typically get the news, newspaper, radio, TV, internet, other? Uh, primarily internet, um, but I do 
read the local newspaper every day, um, but primarily Google News and, and Google Alerts is kind of how I digest my news these days. Uh, I don't have cable in my house. Uh, I uh, cut the cord and just do internet. So, um, you know, now it's internet based, whether it's Google News, Yahoo News, MSNBC, CNN, you know, mm -hmm. however I want to digest anything that day will, will work. I think you've already answered my next question. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars for me. <laughs> All right. What is your vision for New Alm in five years? So, in a perfect world, I would like to have a more vibrant downtown, getting those storefronts filled, um, you know, and have, have it walkable, have the sidewalks repaired, um, you know, the crosswalks, I can see, you know, some of the brickwork has come up, getting that fixed. So just a more vibrant downtown, you know, that if someone, you know, lives in the upstairs apartments, they can come down, they can get restaurants, go shopping, they can, you know, maybe a small little bodega type, you know, um, grocery store, you know, for them to shop to so they don't have to drive to either end of town if they really want to stay within that walkability. Um, I would like to see uh, the airport industrial park, you know, leased up or, you know, filled up with businesses and, and starting, um, you know, the infrastructure on, um, the second part of the industrial park uh, within five years. But, you know, if in five years we have half of the business park filled up, to me, that would be a win because it's been vacant for 10 years. So if we can get half of it filled up, I would be okay with that as well. Okay. Uh, so knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Huh. Invest in Amazon and invest <laughs> in Netflix. Would you know, I, I think those would be the, the two biggest things. Um, as far, you know, career-wise, I would probably have told my, my younger self to join the FBI. Um, you know, it's, it's, law enforcement has been in my family. Everyone in my family is in law enforcement. I'm kind of the only one that's not. Uh, and my mom went to uh, the FBI Academy um, their leadership training and when she came back she was like Chris when you finish college you should apply for the FBI I think it'd be really good for you and it was always in the back of my mind and I never did and in hindsight I was like maybe I should have done that so I think you've answered my next question if you could have one do-over in life what would it be you know is I, that what it would be or is there something else no I don't think I would do a do-over you know that would be something I would like to probably have done, but if I did anything over, I wouldn't be where I am now. And that's kind of one of those things that everything that I've done in my life up to this point has led me here. And I wouldn't trade being here for anything else in the world. It's like, I love my job. I love working with everyone that I work with. And the city has become home to me in the short period of time that I've been here. You know, I don't feel lost driving around. I walk around at night, I can wave to people, they say hi, you know, people are friendly and they talk to me. I don't have to deal with traffic, you know, and I've enjoyed, you know, everything about the city so far. And once my family gets here and we can actually, you know, fully become part of the community, you know, I'm just looking forward to that. Great. Well, I am all out of questions. I just want to thank you so much for your time. This is the first forum we've held, so we have been the guinea pigs, yeah. and I appreciate your willingness to uh, go through that with us. No, thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay.